Hi everyone, welcome back to Books and Beyond with Bound and we are back with another Tara and Michelle episode. Hi Michelle. Hi Tara, can't wait. Yes. So in our previous episodes we have decoded how big Indian families have been portrayed to the rise of self help to why we read what we read and we were just discussing and you know we were discussing what should we talk about next and we've come across so many articles that say non fiction is doing really well in india and even if you enter a book store there's one type of book that's doing really well and that is books based on real people real stories same if you open up netflix you know the amount of stories based on real life people is increasing and we were just wondering you know why do we see this pattern of stories based on real people why as human beings are we so fascinated is it because truth is stranger than fiction or is it because we want to learn from these extraordinary people across different areas of life or you know we're just so curious so let's get into that and but first let's tell our listeners what kind of real stories excite us so michelle what you know it is to you in this topic hmm yeah i think for me um what i realized was that it was a very uh, subconscious decision i was consciously uh, i mean not consciously subconsciously uh, picking books uh, which happened to feature real women who are sort of extraordinary real women badass women who are out there doing things that we don't ordinarily hear of like for example um i recently read uh, meow meow by shina thrao and we also um uh, interviewed him and the reason i wanted to read the book was because it was based on baby patankar right sort of understanding okay what goes behind the making of a drug queen right like how did she fight all the odds and how did she sort of rise up the ranks what did she do to sort of you know fend off all the men right she she had she was living in this um locality where there were you know gundas and there were constant threats to her life and you know she sort of uh, surpassed all of that um and another book that again i i you know just sort of picked up was this uh, autobiography sorry this biography of uh, savitri bai phule uh, who happens to be known as one of the most renowned revolutionists in maharashtra for sort of uh, you know uh, vouching for education for everybody um so i kind of realized that you know stories about real people um really really inspire me when they are about women who do uh, things for um, sort of i mean who sort of i don't know i will not say shatter the glass ceiling but sort of do something different what about you though what kind of yeah. stories are you drawn to no i agree with the, what you said about women you know especially in country like ours to see women who live these extraordinary lives there are just so many stories so i was working as a journalist at she the people before starting bound and my job was basically to find these pe- women who had done extraordinary things and extraordinary things don't have to be sort of you know that crazy it can even be simple as as simple as you know doing really well in your job but my job was to find women who were you know doing something different and i used to travel all over bombay and interview them on video and you know i love and that's the reason i love non fiction that's the reason i love you know stories about real people because getting to know these and if i if i can ask you tara because i mean it's very fascinating you know you you went all over bombay like do you remember any one story that sort of stayed with you and i mean yeah definitely not just, not just the story but also like you getting that story you know yeah definitely so you know the whole point was to find stories right and so i remember interviewing uh one woman who started and this was way before ratan tata had invested in something like this she had started an elderly care system where basically you have you know a group of volunteers young volunteers like you and me and it's not only for physical health because you have nurses and things like that but it's also for companionship because the amount of elderly people in india are rising uh and so she had started that so i interviewed you know i interviewed her i interviewed somebody who was an air hostess and she became the face of the brussels attack so the brussels terrorist attack and i remember getting on a call with her and downloading her entire story uh, it was very emotional you know she remembers such vivid details so that was that was one now she sort of set up a program 
um, for survivors and she's back to work, you know, despite sort of having that traumatic experience as an air hostess. Then another interview that I remember is um, a woman who started a, li- a library for young children in rural Meghalaya. Uh, you know, so there, so right from, you know, interviewing, you know, the top women in their fields, you know, because we also interviewed, you know, heads of companies, lots of startup founders, two women who are using and doing extraordinary things you know, and making and difference, I, like setting up a library, you know. Yeah, so, and Tara, just one more thing. So how how did you find these women? It must not have been easy to sort of track them down. Yeah, right? I often go back and I wonder, you know, where are they? Because I want to write such stories again. But if you're not in the flow of it, then you're not in the flow of it. So for me right now, it's harder to find these women. But when I was in the flow, I was sort of speaking to so many people coming in contact. I was attending a lot of events, going out there. So that's when my, and my mind was always trained on, oh, I need to find, you know, women doing extraordinary things, you know, and it can be anything. It could be sort of a female Uber driver, you know, because at that time it was pretty rare. Uh, so, 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 yeah, so like, yeah, actually, or an artist, you know, like, yes. because I was interested in like art. So like a street artist doing something different. Uh, so there's hundreds and millions of stories out there and, that's why I think it's so, I just love the genre because truth, firstly, the two things, truth is really stranger than fiction. And because of the kinds of things that, that, you know, that we as people on this earth experience. And secondly, that every person's life is so rich and has so much to say. Every person's life is not only a life story, but it's a cultural biography. You know, it's a, sociological study of where they're living there's so many it's a history of that time a history of a place and there's so many histories and lies that traditional publishing doesn't even sort of begin to scratch the surface and that's why we're launching moments you know because every person's life is a history sociology culture and every person's life has to be documented you know so I remember documenting my Nana's story and my Nana was one of the most prominent architects in the 70s and 80s and he had a very different architectural style which he brought to a lot of the embassies in Delhi so through chronicling his achievements his highs his lows it's not only very inspiring as a personal life story but it's also a chronicle of kind of architecture, kind of time period, kind of food, kind of, there's a lot of things that come together. Uh, And that's sort of what also we're trying to do with moments is encourage, you know, apart from traditional publishing, which obviously exists, but there are very few slots for people, uh, you know, and the stories there are are much richer than what, you know, is coming out there. So here's a space for people who want to tell, you know, their life stories to really, you know have a beautifully designed you know well written one so but anyway you tell me Michelle what like I've been going on about my life about she the people and life story but what about these real stories do you like so um yeah I mean one thing that I really like that you mentioned that traditional publishing they have only so many slots right and and I think we are in this age where there's this content boom you have so many books and in fact there's another um, you know, argument that I've heard that, oh, aren't there too many books out there right now? But I feel that, you know, sometimes some of the most interesting stories slip through the cracks of traditional publishing, which is where, you know, indie publishing comes in and all of that. But still, what I've noticed is because, you know, we're talking about the, you know, publishing itself giving so much space to real life stories. I've noticed, Tara, that a lot of publishers are coming out with very interesting stories about real people. So, for example, I I sort of did a scan of all the, you know, the major publishers. And for example, I'll just give you some names of books that I really, you know, sort of that stood out to me because they're based on real people and something which I haven't come across before. So, for example, um, I think it was Penguin who released A Nowhere Man by Shivalik Bakshi. And, you know, it's about this missing soldier who uh, actually goes missing in the Indo-Pak 1971 war. And the book is sort of fascinating because it's written by his own nephew and his nephew sort of speaks to everybody even soldiers on the other side of the border even uh, Pakistani soldiers which is what he shared with us and it's really really interesting to see how somebody tries to gather all these memories gather all these you know moments of a person's life 
through others' accounts, which I also find very fascinating when someone's trying to write a biography. Like, I'm sure, you know, Tara, you would have also had this experience when you wrote the book about your grandfather, you know, asking other people about him. And it's sort of, it's very interesting to see that everyone looks at a person differently, you know? So Penguin, it was just one book, right? Now, for example, Harper, and when I saw which is the book that's the most trending, it is <laughs> Indrani Mukherjee's book, which is about the very high-profile case uh, you know, which talks about her daughter and this is her own version, again, based on a real person. And then, you know, Juggernaut, for example, released a book that I think you are going to really like, Tara. It is Women in the Wild and it actually chronicles the stories of women who are India's most brilliant women wildlife biologists right and I think in all our conversations even on previous episodes we know that wildlife is something both of us are just you know drawn to imagine seeing them through the lens of these you know biologists who sacrifice their lives to to understand uh you know wildlife so yeah I think that book sounds very interesting and what I also think is very interesting is you know uh, Archer Malhotra's remnants of a separation because that is also, you know, people's stories told, you know, Archal has actually researched them. And uh, the book is about, you know, partition stories. So people who've been sort of, you know, had to cross the border during partition. There's so many stories, you know, about that as well. So if we're talking about, I think we're talking about book recommendations right now. So, uh, um, you know, one interesting book that I saw recently is called The Taliban and I which is a first person account of uh, of a woman who's got married to an afghan and ended up fighting with the taliban for her life and i think the reason that we really you know enjoy these kind of stories is that we will never have access and knowing that it's real you know i mean we can read something that's fictional uh, for example there's a book about you know a woman who rises up the, the ranks of the ips and her training. But knowing that these stories are real versus reading the same thing as a fictional account, it hits you differently. Uh, don't you think? I mean, I love fiction. I love the emotions that it makes me feel. But just the fact that, oh my God, like a human being living and breathing like you and me, you know, and we're all the same, you know, we're built of the same stuff, went through something that I can never imagine ever going through in my life or has done something that I can't ever do for example there's a book about you know women sportsmen and the way that they've sort of you know it's it's called what i learned from running i think uh and the way oh, that yeah. they've yeah transcended boundaries right and pushed their bodies to the limit or this woman who's ended up fighting taliban or malala who's you know these are unimaginable situations but they're very much real and that is what is so fascinating i yeah. think about these real stories no true Tara and and I think this is this is something that that came across my mind uh recent when I recently read uh Mr. Hussein Zedi's book which was about a raw agent and I just put myself in that person's shoes and I thought imagine if I am famous if people are just sort of you know applauding me for the good work that I've done over the past 20 years right let's say now you know the the whole country sort of worships me and overnight my image changes and everyone's like, hey, you're the bad person, you know, I, I we just, we don't like you, right? And and you're just, you're convicted for something. Oh my God, that just, and as you said, Tara, that can only happen when you read a true story. That can only happen when you read nonfiction, because then, you, you know, the stakes are very high, I feel. And, and honestly, see, this is something which is not a new pattern, Tara. This has been happening for the past few years, actually. So when I was reading up on this, I came across three, four articles which told me about how non-fiction is like trending in India. Like it's like, you know, non-fiction is king. Everyone prefers non-fiction over the other. And I was really surprised to read it actually because it's been steady. So since the pandemic, the non-fiction has been the reigning genre across, right? And now within non-fiction with stories, right? And, and like we've noticed, it's, it's stories about real people, you know? Yeah. Right. I think also, I think the OTT, you know, has also fed yes. into this. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, and I feel it's a lot about empathy, you know, and mm. we sort of feel for these people and we also don't understand these people sometimes, which is where the con stories, the scandal stories come in. So yeah. while we have stories where, you know, we ha have a lot of empathy where, you know, we say, oh, you know, imagine this woman went through so much or this is such an inspiring story or, you know, maybe I can learn something from this story. We also have stories based on real people that we cannot relate to at all 
and that is why those stories are so interesting because we cannot relate to them you know whether it's a story of ted bundy who you know we people like you and i we just don't understand we just don't get it you know or even uh, you know there's so many stories right now about real life people who've done cons uh, right so uh, and so many books coming out and maybe you would have a few recommendations so yeah i think that the fact that we can't relate you know to some people or we can't learn or we don't get inspired that is also so interesting you know because these are real life people who just start doing something that i don't understand at all yeah yeah no and it when it comes to sort of as you said out of the box right tara i would say yes there are there are stories which sort of go to the extreme like you know like we see there it could be scandals it could be murders it could be whatever right but what i sort of like about this era that we are in is we are also seeing stories about people who are you know sort of like us and not like us at the same time so what i've noticed is there are a lot of influencers who are coming out with stories with books like for example um, let's say ankur varigo right or let's say you know ashwin dog and there's also a, there's also this trend of voyeurism on one hand yeah. we're reading books that are not that are completely like we don't relate to somebody and and there's also books that we want to read on people that we just want to know like bollywood right what do you think do you have any book recommendations um yes i think for me uh there are there are definitely books that are about uh you know very very famous personalities out there okay i'll give you an example um especially you know the friends character uh chandler who who recently uh chandler is a character's name obviously it is matthew perry uh when he recently died you know like there were so many memes there were so many posts about him but the only post that i was drawn to was when i saw a a, a picture of a book of his own story put up by barisan's uh, booksellers i don't know why maybe because i'm naturally drawn you know to books but you know for me i was like okay the whole world knows you the whole world has different versions of yourself but what is your version i bought the book too because of that really yeah oh, because because okay. i felt that even if you know these celebrities they might get ghost writers they might not reveal all that's okay they yeah. might they might yeah. but the fact is it's a 50000 word book now in that 50000 word book it has to be you and it's it's a more in depth you than a 10 minute interview or a 2 second reel it's your voice even if it's unreliable or whatever you know it's not 100% factual you'll get more into their mind than you ever would otherwise i think that's why these books about celebrities these documentaries you know david beckham's documentary we've seen david beckham growing up but the documentary about his life where he's sitting and he's telling us about what he went through but how he started his love that's invaluable because that's voyeurism that's what we want to know yeah and i think more than voyeurism uh, tara for me like you know as a writer what i see it as is owning your narrative like i would feel really helpless if like the world sort of you know assumes that michelle is like this and i have a different story you see which is where i feel and and there was another celebrity book i think that i was really fascinated about was i think the sri devi um, account so i had seen two three books coming out i think rupa had uh, come out with one version and there were others but then again i really wanted to know you know what's her story but yes of course it is it's it's a little dicey because she's uh, you know she's not around or she didn't write the book all of that but yes i feel that we are definitely seeing a, a trend in a lot of stories coming out about people right now it is just celebs like is is one uh, you know one aspect of it so for example you know another kind of story that really fascinates me that is like founders and entrepreneurs and, and i always think of you <laughs> whatever so i want to know from you that are there any specific kind of you know founder stories struggles entrepreneur stories that sort of you're drawn to so one real life story that i really really liked was bob iger's uh, story and bob iger was the ceo of disney and i really liked this book because it uh, you know Oh, it went into his mind, went to into how he made all these deals because Disney had bought bought Star Wars. It like tied up with you know all these different IPs that made it so big. And he describes how you know the Steve Jobs and him became friends and how the Pixar deal happened. And he's very vulnerable. And the other biography that I really liked is um, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, which is the biography of uh, the Nike's founder. and how he started uh 
you know he went to japan he started uh, you know with onitsuka shoes and then you know how even the brand nike came you know it was just an intern and she made the swoosh and look at the value of that swoosh now uh so so that you know and then all the coaches or how he developed the product and it's very first hand like these are not business books they're very sort of like the founder story their life journey and what you can learn from them which is obviously you know also a growing genre because people want to know right i want to know maybe like what founders in india are also doing i want to know you know how they've made it what is their story like i would love to read a book about i know narayan murthy is sort of in controversy but you know yeah. a book about his life or you know yeah. the founder of oberoi hotels uh, just passed away so a book about his life but so many books just get lost you know so many books get just get lost so i think founder story is a very interesting and it also obviously helps them build their brand but it helps startup founders like me also learn which is why again we are seeing that trend and which is why our publishing house also helping founders write their stories uh but that's and, interesting michelle that you brought founder stories up yeah no and you know uh, which founder story i am really curious to read tara can you guess <laughs> just take a while guess uh is it a woman founder yes yeah okay it's uh, okay i'll give you another wait wait hint. give a hint give a hint okay the hint is that we use it every day it's it's an app sort of thing <laughs> it's an app by a woman founder yeah. and we use it every day yeah it's it's like a it, it's like a thing no one no one sort of not uses it okay i'll tell you it's canva so the uh, can- yes yeah and when i read her story and and i felt like oh if i was a commissioning editor i would just literally ask her like write this book right now you know because i i really find it fascinating that she was just tinkering with this idea and she felt that this is the need of the art that people need to make graphics people need to make sort of you know everyone wants to create artwork but all the apps are expensive everything is out of reach and and not everyone is that technically sound right in that field like, like for example see i'm not a uh, i would say visual graphics person but i would maybe would like to create some you know silly graphics here and there so i just loved how she took that thought and made something that's sort of usable for all of us so i would love to read her book i don't know if the book is out and all of that but i think that will be definitely interesting but um there is an observation that i've made so from the real stories which are coming out like even on ott as you said uh, most recently i saw uh, tali uh, you know where sushmita sen uh, acts and it's it's about this real it's about the life of um, gauri uh, savan um what i feel is you know we sort of tend to get into a pattern of similar kind of stories so for example if there's true crime then we have 20 stories about true crime right you know we have we even did a whole episode on on how i true crime and, and scams and all of these work yes you know like you said there's voyeurism but i also feel that in this day and age we also should have space for more voices right like at least me i would love to see more of these lgbtq voices heard out you know and and from them themselves so it's like you know you know first hand accounts uh, because how many have we come across i mean we just we spoke to for example vivek tejuja we spoke to anirudha mahale who's who's you know shared like bared their soul in the books and they have you know spoken to us but we don't see any others so i think that's something that's like a big gap have you noticed any gap Oh, in in this. I, yeah i think that one thing is very interesting that's uh, happening is that lots more authors are profiling underserved communities and i find that fantastic because those are honestly some of my favorite books over founder journeys all of the things we've spoken about these are my favorite books because we never get access these are issues that we need to learn about and these are real people's everyday lives you know they're not doing something too crazy like we you know the, the we uh, uh, help with the book about women bo- motorcyclists book what a great book but these are people who are just living everyday lives within a system that isn't working for them one example of that is uh, fire on the ganges by radhika ayengar who we've also interviewed and she talks about the lives of the domes who are the corps bearers in banaras and what she does is she picks four or five characters and we get to know them we get to know how they live every day we get to know their love lives we get to know the family dynamics the culture the systems of caste that are oppressing them how, and how that plays out plays out daily and i think these stories of real people are i feel very important and maybe the most important and we know so many you know interesting books that have done that and this 
hundreds of communities like this that are waiting for their stories to be there millions of communities not millions or thousands of communities yeah. all over india you know whose stories have to be told in this way yeah no i'm so glad you brought that up because i think community is another is is something like but there's a lot of opportunity you know like for example um i recently came across this book i think it's called his majesty's hunters and it's about this naga uh, community how nagas fought the british uh you know during the second world war it's a very very interesting insight see we don't often get to you know hear about other communities like i'll you know just share about myself so a lot of people ask me you know they say okay but you know for example when you celebrate christmas or easter why do you all have pork and then i have to give them like a history lesson in how you know the portuguese came to goa and we were colonized you know all of that so i do feel that india itself has so many communities rich in culture and you know the influences are varied be it lifestyle from food drinks you know what you do and how you speak you know language and we've covered this on 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 our previous episodes i think there's a lot of opportunity here um, that that we can still tap into that we've not sort of covered you know all the uh, i would say most of the communities for example northeast right how many books do we have about the northeast community which help us understand like you know northeast is just it's not like a region where everyone practices the same thing no each place has a different uh, you know flavor so recently uh, tara you know zuban for example came out with the book uh, i think it was called we come from the mist writings from meghalaya uh, and it was edited by janis pariyat so you know like i would say dedicated efforts like this where you want to show a community that has not been given given uh, enough exposure before I think that's something that I'm really interested to see. Yeah, I agree. And another book that you know I always talk about is "Truck Day India" by Rajat Abhaykar. One of my favorite books because he has chronicled the lives of India's truck drivers, and he sat in the backs of trucks and you know understood how what goes on in daily life. You know, and I found that so very interesting. And another book that I also spoke about and I've spoken about is "What's Left of the Jungle." where we're talking about the animal wildlife conflict and we see it through the eyes of this this villager uh, akshu who lives at the borderline of the forest and the issues he goes through and again simple things like family dynamics education love life day to day emotions all of these things i feel like i know this character i feel like i you know feel for him and and i think these stories are so important that brings me to my other point is that uh you know when we are recording all these stories there's a question of accuracy and there's so much misinformation and obviously with ott there's so much demand for you know recreating stories based on real life whether in the present or even in past and, and past is a completely different thing because you have to get your sources correct you know how you write history you know that can be a whole other episode for us uh and they even started you know hiring consultants now on these ott platforms we interviewed somebody who told us that you know when they make army stories because there's so much emphasis on real life army story they hiring consultants and i think that's so important to do yeah yeah and this actually makes me think of of you know uh, uh, of this trend of historical uh, you know non fiction tara these are real real stories about real people that we have not come across right so th- this very recent book that i read that has not been able to get out of my head is the lord of the deccans and the whole reason is because you know i never knew that so much happened in south india like i'm very sure it's like you know whole of india a lot has happened but what have we studied throughout the years right and i i studied cbse syllabus and we had the very typical you know um uh, recounting of of all historical events with very typical in- independence movement you know all of that and and this book really opened my eyes to to sort of you know just how many books we can sort of publish out there about our own history you know if we focus on different regions so i think i think history is is one of it like especially like i said tara i like books which focus on women who are extraordinary so even in historical uh, non fiction books women from the past who have not been given that much credit you know um yeah i think that's for me what about you i agree like i think we both have this thing about like historic real life stories of historical women um and one of the books that we always yeah. and the two authors that we always speak about who we've also interviewed are uh kavita rao who wrote yes. about you know india's first lady doctors um and she does so much research and she profiles these very real life women um and ira mukherjee who you know publicizes the uh, women of the mughal era 
and uh, another historical woman that comes to mind is you know uh, jane borges's book uh, about women mafia and actually gangubai is based on a story from that book which she she co-wrote with hussein zaidi uh and that movie is done so well alia what is on a national award and you know it showed us something that it's such a great story and showed us a part of bombay it showed us a part of the mathi pura that you know mass audience may not have seen before There's so many and that's what i'm saying i think we're just drawn to these because firstly you know as women we have never been exposed to as many stories about real life women you know before when we were growing up so it was not a paradigm that we were used to and now you know finally we're seeing that you know right from the beginning we've had path breakers obviously we've had path breakers all along and those stories are coming to life and so, that's so interesting so you have a question for you tar okay you're it's, it's sort of a challenge because yes i do agree that we have come a long way uh, earlier we didn't have stories about women or you know any 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 uh, person or community who has, who has not been given enough exposure we are definitely going uh you know i would say leaps and bounds ahead right uh, but now that you know you've seen there's a content boom right there are stories everywhere there's ott there's podcast there's books all of that right do you think it's going to be saturated do you sort of envision uh, envision a uh, you know a, a point where people are tired of of stories you know uh, by real people what do you think what what are your thoughts i don't agree <laughs> i don't think that people i think people will tire of genre so so personally for me i'm a little tired of true crime right uh these are stories are based on real people you know lots of things happening netflix coming up with content i'm a little saturated with that but am i saturated with finding out about how people have real people have actually lived i don't think i'll ever be saturated with that i think that as a human being fundamentally i'm interested in and the great thing about being a writer editor journalist is that you know you know this you can find and you can observe and you can find that in every story because every story all of us are our main character we all have main character energy you know and we all our own protagonist and our stories itself have ups and downs and the narrative arcs of the hero's journey and the failures and and all of that stuff and as a writer you can sort of you know see that with every single person which is why it's interesting and and that's why at least when we started moments because we found that there's no i mean that's reason why i wanted to do because i found that there's no saturation in fact there needs to be more spaces but what do you think about this okay i think that that it's it's sort of a, a very thought provoking uh, thing uh, tara because i often think about who can tell these stories and who can't right not everyone has the privilege to tell the story and i'll give you an example of this because this is the one book about a real a uh, woman which has stayed with me over the years i don't know if you've read it it's the real life story of aruna shanbag the uh, nurse um, you know who was raped and who was sort of bedridden for over 40 years in 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 bombay in uh, i think the kem hospital and the book was written by her lawyer by the lawyer who fought for uh euthanasia who fought for and she was the only woman who fought for that the the what's what's interesting about the story is that the staff in the km hospital they cared for her they took looked after her for 40 years and they said no we are here we are taking care of you and here there's a there's a lawyer on the other side who says no but this is not the way to live you know and she was she was fighting for it so she actually uh, ended up writing the book and it really made me think about okay you know who can tell these stories right so for example like we discussed the partition story uh tara right so for example let's say there are you know families maybe who were not able to carry you know objects back home with them when they were traveling what is the reason right maybe you know it's you're in a hurry you're in a panic you're not able to so now how do we chronicle stories of people who slip the cracks right for me i think that is something that that i often think about right like like if if let's say i want to tell the story but i don't have the resources but i think i think i have my answer also here which is ghost writing in a way because i think earlier you know when when ghost writing didn't exist there were no there were no ways right maybe people had a lot of stories but then how do they tell it let's say now they don't have the time they don't have the resources what do they do so i do feel ghost writing has like it's it's like one answer to it but it's not a complete answer yeah i think ghost writing is for, for the privilege right but i think that your yes. question is for people yeah. who don't have that privilege or don't have the time don't have the language skills don't have all of that exactly. and also 
we're yeah. talking about english language publishing right and we're talking about like mass platforms like ott and all of those how do you get these stories that slip through the cracks there i think that's a very interesting question i think you know journalists like radhika ayengar who who are, who are going to these communities and chronicling and building relationships so even mansi choksi who was a fly on the wall uh you know uh, and uh, chronicle you know intercaste marriages very interesting work because they actually go on the, onto the field they build these relationships which is not easy to do um and then they they dig out these stories so they have, they obviously have that privilege of being able to travel being able to you know speak in speak in english get these stories published and they're using it i think that's very interesting that's something that you know i think you and i would both would also really like to do and like, it, like you know this reminds me of sonia ferrero tara the one uh, yeah. you know the yeah good girls uh, narrative and and what's the the flip side here is the opposite so she knew english but she struggled with hindi and where where she had uh, you know someone with her who sort of helped her so i think yeah, these journalists are finding ways to navigate uh, you yeah. know layers that we have in india so it reminded me of one incident um, so i was in switzerland with my mother and my mom had sprained her ankle so we went to the emergency room now in the emergency room we a, a, a mother and her two children little children were there and they were from pakistan they started chatting with us and this woman told us her entire life story she said that she had basically her husband had moved to switzerland for a job and she had spent the last 5 years migrating to switzerland basically like illegally kind of um you know she, like with her two children crossing mountains in boats i mean the things that she was saying were unimaginable you know and and then she was here and she was in switzerland and all she wanted to do was go back home because she hated the cold and she hated the food and she wanted to go back home these kind of stories you just i mean where will this woman ever write a book where will she tell her story you know and i have i have something similar uh, that because i was in the middle east uh, there's a huge expat population there right so there are a lot of bangladeshi immigrants if you hear some of their stories right just like this just like this woman they can go through any terrain any sort of you know beat you know i would say snowing or it is hot like an oven they go through all these you know channels it's of course it's illegal but they do all of that just to end up migrating to a place where they sort of you know maybe they even see the returns like 10 years down the line we don't know you know we don't even know if they survive the night it's that scary but there are a lot of stories and this reminds me of a recent documentary that i saw uh, that i and i think this was that it really sort of struck a chord with me because i felt like if i had ever had a chance to sort of write a, a real life story you know like you said if we had an opportunity i think i would focus on you know the migrant community that that goes to work especially as domestic workers so i think this this documentary is called uh, um, asian maids so it literally covers uh, the filipino community okay maids who uh, go to you know different countries like lebanon who go to china and just how badly they are exploited like it is you can't even see you know see the visuals you can't even bear to hear them but it's happening things are things are happening but how often do their stories get told you know so so because i'm so uh, passionate about migration and and in general because you know i've been there i do feel that sometimes stories that that come out are often one sided you know it's there's a lot that you can see about these migrants but who are going to who's going to tell their stories and it takes hard work right like the radhika anger's book about the domes like it took her 8 years which means that she had to fund her somebody to fund her or she had to fund herself the travel the stamina you know the patience so that's you know that's why these books are also few and few far between because you know like a person like you and me like we can we go and you know do this how no, many and, people yeah, yeah yeah no and exactly and tara will it pay off right now now see it's not just your writing right now let's say i am writing on my own it's only my time but here what happens is you're taking someone else's time you're interviewing them you're taking it's not just time right it's also emotion you're you're sort of you know i would say letting people in and telling them that you know hey your story will be remembered by others you know you will be known but how do you know it's going to be published because publishing you know like you said though there are a lot of opportunities stories do slip through the crack right and especially if you're a debut writer let's say you're a debut writer you don't have the contacts then what happens so it is i would say definitely it is tricky uh, because it's not just you but there are other lives 
also sort of involved in it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's why we need more programs or more funding or more, you know, structures in place for this kind of writing and for these this kind of storytelling to even happen. Maybe somebody who's listening out there do something about it. <laughs> yes, I really hope so. Yeah, and maybe maybe there could be a system where we even vote for you know whose story we want to hear. You know what I mean? Like often, often it's like uh, uh, I would say nowadays publishers even look at trends. They look at social media. They see they see the demand, right? So I think it'll be really interesting for to have like a portal where people say, "Hey, I want to hear this person's story." Or you know, who knows? Yeah, I'll tell you something. I definitely want to write a story about a community that hasn't. Uh, we talked about before but again who has the time so if somebody out there listening and you know you can do it you have the resources you have the funding go ahead yes and and i think you know for me uh, tara at the end of the day the question the question that that we also have to think about you know as as we are sort of we are working in this industry you know not just as writers and consumers but we also look at the publishing uh, side of it so you know i've also heard this this saying and i would like to end with this thought that is you know is everyone's story worth telling i want to leave this i want to leave this thought with you and with the, with our listeners also i feel yes <laughs> yes so it's like and, and you know what i think is i have a line that i like everyone has a story to tell never ever underestimate anyone you know sometimes we often think like oh but who will be interested in this why why will anybody be interested but you never know you never know what will connect with somebody you don't know you know because i think everyone has their flavor to add yeah everybody is the main character in their own journey <laughs> yeah. yes and so i i really really hope that you enjoyed uh, this episode i especially had a lot of fun i know i can go on for us talking about extraordinary people ordinary people everybody who who's you know fascinating and i just love i think i think i'm lucky to be in this in this era in this year where we get access to so many stories especially you know through so many mediums um you know as as opposed to like olden days where where we didn't even have the internet i think now because of the internet you have access to a lot of people i could just reach out to somebody in another country and say hey you know can we write a book and it's possible uh, i think that's one of the reasons why i love this job so much you know whether it's an editor writer or journalist everybody asks me oh, what's your favorite part and my favorite part is i would never have had access to the kinds of people that i have interviewed or the kinds of people whose books i've worked on who want to tell their stories if i wasn't in this job that's the best part helping people you know tell their stories um, and that's what we're trying to do so Yeah thanks Michelle and I think it was really fun and we can go on about this but uh yeah let's wrap up and on to the next episode yes okay see you all next time see you